Hello everybody and welcome to the first assembly of the second half of Trinity term. Welcome back. Um, I hope you've all had a restful half term and are looking forward to um, the five weeks we have until uh, the summer holidays begin. Uh, traditionally, the sunniest term certainly has been that so far and um, in every year group i hope you're looking forward to the work to come in key stage three i know that new projects are being developed um, in all of the departments in key stage four you will be um, either thinking about how to round off your learning this year um, to prepare, prepare for exams in michaelmas or in year 11 you've been enjoying the uh, pre-a level work and that will continue for another three weeks um, in fact, we've been joined by <clears throat> external uh, Year 11 students who um, are hoping to join us in the sixth form in September. So that's another exciting um, addition to um, our, our classrooms. And um, Year 12, I know, will be um, starting to prepare for their examinations. Um, and they have two sets of them. Well, they can choose between two sets, one in June and one in August. Um, and of course, alongside all of that, we're hoping we're hoping to start reopening the school um, in a couple of weeks time to certain year groups, um, though not to all. Um, but that is a step to, um, I hope, returning to the normality that we all desire. Um, <clears throat> the theme of this week's assembly is curiosity and um, curiosity, as we know, um, killed the cat. Um, it can be a uh, force that disturbs us because when we are curious about the world, we are led into areas that we do not necessarily at first understand. And I noticed this week, of course, the um, SpaceX project in America uh, returned uh, men to uh, space. And um, that is an exciting uh, product of man's curiosity. Um, I know there is, when we look up at the skies, um, there is a sense of awe and wonder at the world that provokes our curiosity to think, well, what could it be like on different planets, etc. But the curiosity I'm interested in is not necessarily that most expansive and awe-inspiring sort that we can get when we look at, um, you know, blue uh, vistas and, uh, and horizons. I want to draw attention to um, a different sort of curiosity, one that we can all develop in ourselves, I think. And that's the curiosity of Charles Darwin. Um, of course, everybody knows about Darwin's uh, voyage on the Beagle <clears throat> and his great discoveries about um, animal life on this planet. And on his immediate return in 1837, he um, gave uh, four lectures um, at the Royal Geographical Society, and um, three of those lectures were on the discovery <clears throat> of what he found uh, when he was uh, discoveries he found on the Beagle. This, of course, would lead to um, the publication eventually of The Origin of the Species. But the fourth lecture he gave um, was the wonderfully titled formation of vegetable mould through the action of worm. And I really like this title and this idea because of what it tells us about curiosity. Um, what had happened was, even though Darwin had been all around the world, he became interested in the idea of what worms do in the ground outside all of our houses. Um, he, in fact, had been working, walking with his uncle, Josiah Wedgwood, he of the pottery um, fame. And Josiah had said to him one day when they were walking, well, look at that waste field over there. Um, we had thrown the remains of our factories, i.e. Um, lime and cinder on this waste ground uh, a number of years ago. But now that waste ground had transformed itself by itself into fertile loam. And Josiah Wedgwood said in passing, I suppose worms have done this because no man had cultivated the field. But rather than thinking that's just an everyday observation, Darwin became uh, wanted to think much harder about what that meant. 
I mean, what the worms were actually doing. I.e. Darwin was always imaginatively able, with his curiosity, to think about causation, what could not be seen, what had happened under the earth, literally what our eyes could not see, and what had been happening for thousands of years, things that the worms had been doing that we could not see, i.e. he was interested in the origin of things. And Darwin's curiosity led him to fantastic conclusions, of course. The, the most famous will be the evolution of the species. Again, something we now habitually take for granted. Oh, yes, evolution. But that those observations are radical. They're not, re they're not simply radical for science and they're not simply radical for re religion at the time. They were radical for every discipline every academic discipline, in fact, for the way in which we all look at the world. Because when Darwin looked at that field, he realized that worms, he calculated the number of worms in a field of a certain size, and he realized that in eight years, worms on their own could um, transform a field into fertile soil um, 12 to 13 inches in thickness. And Furthermore, his curiosity led him to see that worms are in fact essential to our world and in fact essential to man. In the old story, pre-Darwin, of course, man is the um, protector and steward of the earth. But one of the conclusions of Darwin's curiosity about worms is that in fact, man is a poor copy of the worm because the worm is both a brilliant geologist and a brilliant farmer. This is both a shocking conclusion of his curiosity um, because it overturns hierarchies. And that's what it did to all of our thinking, whether in physics, whether in maths, whether in philosophy, whether in history, whether in geography. We have all since eight, the 1830s begin begun to think much harder about the origins, about what could not be seen and the curiosity that was all around us that we could apply ourselves to could reveal this to you if you began to look at it in a certain way. So Darwin, when he looks at the humble worm, sees actually an overturning of hierarchy of the powers of this world. And there's a funny sort of um, consolation in this, because um, in one sense it might overturn one sort of deity, but it gives us a consolation in the fact that we can see that the worms were farmers long before human beings were here, and they will be farmers of the earth long after we are not here. And that is a remarkable observation, and one I think we can learn from, because curiosity, as Alice in Wonderland knew, is it doesn't simplify in the sense of making things more plain. It makes things, in fact, curiouser and curiouser. And it's no surprise that the moment in Alice in Wonderland when she has that observation is when she changes in size. She changes in perspective and she changes in hierarchy in terms of how high or small she is in relation to the rest of the earth. And therefore, the lesson I would like us all to take away both in our studies and how we are looking at the world is that please don't take it for granted. Curiosity may kill the cat, but actually it can also be harnessed for a great deal of wonder and we can all do that. You can look at the fields outside your own houses and discover things that nobody has yet seen. And I very much urge you to um, adopt such seeings as far as you're able to and learn from that sort of curiosity because it's a great force for us all. Thank you and have a good term.